Okay, thank you very much and good evening and particularly to all the people who are watching online and tuning in now, thank you very much. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is David Hopkins. I'm the Chief Executive of Timber Development UK. And we're here to celebrate this event, which is part of our World of Wood Festival about upskilling future built environment professionals. Um, if you're wondering what Timber Development UK is, Timber Development UK was formed from the merger of the Timber Trade Federation and TRADA and is bringing together the whole supply chain in terms of importers, distributors, sawmillers with specifiers, designers, manufacturers and others. The university engagement program uh, run by my colleague Tabitha, who I will uh, 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 introduce shortly, is there to sort of develop the skills uh, back up from academia, back up that supply chain, and particularly to bring different teams together. And she will talk about that shortly. It's very important for us uh, as an industry to bring in new specifiers, new designers, and to make sure that they have the skills there to specify the goods, because the majority of our members are trying to sell wood. They want more wood specified, and we need those specifiers coming in, understanding uh, this whole program. We, we, I said that this was part of a, a World of Wood festival. We've had a month of seminars, webinars, events, uh, competitions and other activities really tying in and coinciding with COP26 this year as we wanted to highlight uh, from a number of different angles the role that the timber supply chain and particularly timber construction can play in reducing emissions and particularly about decarbonizing construction and that's what is going to be the major theme of this competition today. So at that point Thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. I'm going to hand straight over to my colleague, Tabitha Binding, to introduce this year's competition. Thank you. Thank you, David. So, Timber Development UK runs a university engagement programme which brings together academia, professions, and the timber industry to understand timber and how to use it wisely and well. There is no question that the world is warming. Whichever website you look at it, it is incontrovertible. Carbon dioxide was fairly steady for 800,000 years, but it's only in the last 50 years it has risen exponentially. We need to reduce carbon, both in buildings and in the operational use of those buildings. And you will come across more and more whole life carbon assessment and the modules within them. You will see them as circular. You will see them as pictorial. This particular diagram um, drawn by um, an engineer, Kieran Malik, you know, explains it really well. Um, embodied carbon is the huge majority of it. That little square in the center is the operational carbon. But looking at it another way, you see here the upfront carbon, the carbon that you will use via replacement and maintenance, and that at end of life. Along with that operational carbon there you see in the gray. Each building use it proportionately different. And the opportunity from impact is right at the beginning. If you build nothing, you save so much carbon. But if you build less, but build clever and build efficiently and introduce carbon right at the beginning at the concept design, but you can't work in isolation. Architects cannot do it on their own. Engineers cannot do it on their own. And quantity surveyors need to be included, as well as landscape architects. And why is it important in the built environment uh, sector? Is because together we contribute 40% of those global carbon emissions. We have 
the ability to make a huge difference. The Committee on Climate Change makes many recommendations, one of them being using wood in construction to displace high carbon materials. C4 Cities tells us we should switch to low impact materials such as sustainable timber. And Mark Farmer in Modernize or Die says the government needs to promote the use of pre-manufactured solutions in the housing sector. Hence the move towards off-site manufacture and modern methods of construction, which timber is eminently suitable for. But why use timber? Timber is a renewable material. It has a secular um, cycle, whereas carbon intensive materials like concrete or steel have a one-way linear cycle. <coughs> With the timber carbon cycle, we want to extend that longevity of timber in use and carry on reusing it. But you plan to use timber? Which species? Which product? How's it sawn? What tree does it come from? As an engineer, you might have only done one hour of um, timber lectures in your whole four-year cycle. If you're lucky, you might have done two days' worth. Architecture teaches it, but only superficially. Quantity surveyors might never have costed timber, and landscape architects rarely consider it. So how are we to change anything? If, as we well know, the world is on fire, and we are not reacting and we are carrying on teaching the way we were always taught in the manner and sorrows we have always taught in. We are not going to change everything or anything. And so we brought together Riverside Sunderland, a university design challenge. We worked with partners, Sunderland City Council, Moby, and uh, the Northeast Timber Trade or rather the North, yes, the North East Timber Trade Association. I always miss my East and West up. And our sponsors and supporters to bring together a challenge, an interdisciplinary challenge that would enable us all to learn. This was the Riverside Sunderland University Design Challenge, which ran earlier this year in 2021. In Riverside Sunderland, Sunderland City Council plans to build a thousand homes. And this is the site. And this is the area where they plan to build their first hundred homes. They want the Vox to be a carbon neutral community that is attractive, that maximizes connectivity, that encourages active lifestyles, emphasizes the health and well being of people and support social interaction. And they want to build from timber. But how do they do that? We, together with them, we ran a competition that encouraged interdisciplinary teams of students to design one house in detail and 100 homes on this site. But with little timber taught, how were we going to get everybody on the same page? We launched on the 1st of February. And then, in the first week of February, we brought together professionals to talk about the climate challenge. So the first evening, we addressed that climate challenge. On the second evening, we addressed sustainable timber and off-site manufacturer. And then on the third evening, we counted carbon, both embodied and operational. And a bit of light relief, on Friday, we went to our virtual pub. In the second week, we looked at sustainable construction. We looked at desirable homes and communities and the teams that delivered those sustainable and desirable homes and communities. The Sterling Prize winning um, team from behind Goldsmith Street talked us through it, along with the team that won the Homes of 2030 Reba Challenge. 
On the second evening that week, the two run uh, running up teams of the Homes of 2030 also talked us through their design and delivery. And on the third evening, we heard from practitioners who had actually delivered, the, delivered homes, whether they were CLT homes, whether they were iJoist homes, or whether they were solid timber homes, giving our students and participants, as, long as, as well as the wider professional community, an insight how we can deliver carbon neutral, energy efficient, modern homes. In the third week, we looked at materials and carbon emissions. We looked at fabric first. We looked at the timber challenges that need to be faced, whether they be moisture or fire. We then looked at health and well-being, because we don't have that from our homes. Are they really worth building? And in the final week, we looked at how to get to net zero. We looked at structural engineering and how you could deliver homes on very small foundations or in fact concrete free foundations. We looked at how to procure, how to cost and the importance of placemaking. And then we considered what future homes needed to be. And with all this information, our student participants is submitted their designs. The challenge went so well, we, we needed a shortlisting panel to take us from the long list down to the shortlist. I want to thank all these people named here who took the time to go through all our entries and reduce it to a shortlist of eight. Our long list of entries came from 16 different teams from 39 universities. And these teams were interdisciplinary, whether they be architects, engineers, quantity surveyors, landscape architects, designers, mechanical engineers. There was no limit to those who could take part. Our judges included Andy Von Bradsky, from head of MHCLG at that time, Kelly Harrison, an engineer who sits on both the Charter Board and now the Timber Development UK Board, Mark Farmer from Cost Consultancy, who's a quantity surveyor, or cost consultant, I should now say, Neil Guthrie um, from Sunderland City Council, and Gemma Jerome from Build With Nature. And they decided from our shortlisted entries who the winners should be. They were so impressed by the quality of those entries, they um, complimented two teams along with the four winners. So we had Team R from Teesside University. Now Teesside, um, quite a new university, uh, ran this competition within their um, lecture series, the only university who managed to do that. Team I from Sheffield were also um, complimented. And fourth, fourth placed team was an interdisciplinary team from Cardiff, Sheffield, Birmingham and, and Bristol. Now remember this competition took place online, in lockdown, in COVID, and these students had never attended, you know, in that year, attended live lectures, and they had never met in public, or, you know, they only ever met online, and they joined together in this competition to produce these entries. And in third place, we had an interdisciplinary team. This is, uh, you know, a larger team from Bristol, from Bath, from Liverpool, from Robert Gordon University, University of Gloucester, and, and the University of Coventry. And in second place, we had the University of Bath, the University of Sheffield, University of Bristol, Northumbria University, and again, the University of Bath. 
And each team came up with a different concept, a different specification, whether they used CLT, whether they used eye joists, or whether they used solid timber. And the winning team took that to a really in-depth level. They considered how much material they should use to span the areas that they needed to. They started off with CLT, cross-laminated timber, and decided they could actually reduce the amount of timber within that. So they then looked at solid timber and then realized when they ended up with a solution from iJoist, again, they could span the distances, they could bear the loads, but that iJoist system um, became their answer. Now, this team was spread across the world. They came from Dublin, they came from Bath, Cardiff, U University of West London, the University of Sheffield, and Cardiff University. And because they were off-site, some of them were way across the east of the world and some were way across the west of the world. So they met on Monday mornings at half past eight on the morning, every morning, as an online team using Miro boards. They calculated their carbon um, through um, the Field and Clegg Bradley Studio carbon tool. They worked with Passive House and used the design pH and produced a exemplary um, um, scheme and a house in detail. And in fact, Mark Farmer from the Cast Consultancy was so impressed with their costings, he took that information back to his team. And because it went well, and because learning increases, and knowledge is changing quicker than we are almost catching up with it, carbon neutral is no longer what we need to aim for. We need to aim for net zero or beyond. And so this year, or tonight, we are launching our new competition. It is called Southside Hereford, and we are working with new partners. We are working with the Passive House Trust, Edinburgh Napier University, and Enmite from Hereford, and in which case I'd like to hand over to Yogini Patel from the Passive House Trust. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, yes, my name's Yogini. I'm from the Passive House Trust, and we're delighted to be partnering this um, competition this year. So just a little bit about the trust. We are an um, independent, non-profit organization uh, working on a national <coughs> level. We've got about 500 members, and we're part of a much larger international um, community. So there's, um, we're one of 19 or 20 international affiliates. We're the official UK um, affiliate of the Passive House Institute in Germany. Um, and as an independent organization, we aim to promote the standard in the UK. Um, we aim to educate and train up the workforce in terms of delivering Passive House. And we also try and maintain the integrity of the standard and um, provide a reliable source of information. Um, and there's over 1,500 Passive House schemes certified in the UK. Uh, there's over 65,000 globally, and they span a range of building typologies, um, and they cover a multiple range of climates as well. Um, so why we're looking, um, why we're involved with the competition, uh, we've ran previous competitions that are focused on passive house. We've run six competitions in total, um, and education is a core objective of the Passive House Trust. So we aim to um, upskill the work workforce, at least 50% being able to deliver Passive House robustly. Um, and that covers all kinds of, uh, it's across the construction sector. So it's clients and um, planners and developers, all the way through to contractors and QSs and project managers. Um, so students are a key part of that. Um, since those six 
uh, competitions, we've seen a climate emergency, and we've also seen students themselves wanting more from their education. They want more from climate literacy, and that's been hugely encouraging for us. So this collaborative nature of this competition is um, really forward thinking for us, and we've seen that in cross-industry kind of um, working groups such as Letty. It's a really powerful tool of just getting more done and being more impactful. So we're really looking forward to doing that with this competition. Um, we've also seen the success of the previous Riverside Sunderland competition, and we're really encouraged by the legacy of that competition. Um, and that's one thing that we really want to try and push forward, is, is building up this um, resource of knowledge and education. That's not lost. It's not lost within one competition. It gets pulled through. Um, and the other thing that's really exciting about this competition is the live learning project. So you learn so much more differently from a live project than what you would theoretically. And we've seen that in uh, another competition that we've um, partnered with, which is the um, Icebox Challenge in Glasgow, which was on during COP26. And students actually got to design, and then the winners got to build the actual um, competition. Uh, winning scheme. So one box was built to pass file standard, another box was built to building regulation standard, and it was a public installation that was there for two weeks, and you could see the difference between those two standards really effectively, uh, really well received. So what we're looking for from the competition, or from the students who sign up, we're looking for holistic climate literacy. So we want students to be able to look into not just operational carbon, not just embodied carbon. We want them to start thinking holistically about what they're designing. Because uh, I think Tabitha mentioned, buildings account for almost 40% of carbon emissions. So they need to understand what they're designing. They have a huge impact on, on um, what they're designing and, and the wider scheme of things. Um, we want them to really explore and explain those decisions that they make. Uh, we're going to be providing uh, software, so modeling software such as PHPP, which is the Pacifals planning package, and Design PH, which is a SketchUp plugin, um, and also uh, the PH ribbon, which is um, something that can calculate carbon um, and plug into PHPP. So we're really looking forward to seeing students explore those decisions that they're making in terms of the designs. Um, and finally, we want them to have fun, and we want them to kind of understand and appreciate that they have the power to make impactful decisions and hopefully they can carry that on into their um, professional lives. I'm going to hand over to Kirsty now. Thank you, Yogini. Hi everyone, I'm Kirsty Connell Skinner. I'm the Sustainable Construction Manager, uh, Sustainable Construction Partnership Manager at Edinburgh Napier University, the home of the difference makers. For those of you unfamiliar with us, Edinburgh Napier University, according to the Sunday Times 2022 Good University Guide, is the top modern university in Scotland. We're a forward-thinking institution. Um, we're, we're home to the difference makers and people who are inspired by the world around them. And that's a message that we take not just through our national and global partnerships, where we advance careers and progress innovative research, but also something that we are thrilled to be able to take through to this competition to encourage more students to become difference makers in a sustainable built environment. What we are keen to do is making a difference in sustainable construction. And there's three elements of Edinburgh Napier's story that I think are important to share with you today so you get an idea of, of why we are involved. The first is our Queen's Anniversary Prizes. Back in 2009 and in 2015, we were awarded the highest accolade in the higher education research uh, recognition um, for our research into sustainable construction, recognizing the impact that we have both in sustainable construction and wood science on industry and the environment, but also through uh, our education programs and our public engagement. It's particularly related to timber offsite construction, to nanocellulose, to sustainable construction systems, and to architectural design. Second to that is the pioneering built environment exchange. It's a platform for students with a passion for sustainable construction. You're going to hear from um, the professor, Robert Hurstens, who will uh, be following me, who um, set up this program and is also, to be honest, hugely responsible for us being re re awarded the Queen's Anniversary Prize. But I'm going to take the credit for all of this before he gets to talk. Yeah. Built Environment Exchange um, 
basically um, creates internships, scholarships and employ employability projects um, to enable to, uh, students to accelerate their own careers and to accelerate change in the construction culture. Students from diverse degree backgrounds, not just engineering, can apply. Um, they can get funding to take their degree and as long as it's relevant to their ambition in the built environment. Working with international universities as and when we can travel or in the case of this year, working with uh, other competition partners, NMITE. <laughs> um, students get experiences out with their normal day-to-day um, -day learning to, de develop, to develop that experiential learning um, outcomes that we'll see in this competition as well. And then the third part, which Yogini's already mentioned, is of course the Icebox Challenge. Um, Edinburgh Napier University was really delighted to partner, partner on this uh, challenge demonstrating the benefits of a fabric-first approach, building performance, and the use of natural materials, including timber. But this was also the first time that we were able to trial something, a new learning program developed at Edinburgh Napier, the Timber Technology Engineering and Design Program, or Timber TED, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. So this is what we bring. It's our expertise in sustainable construction and wood science in the experiential student learning. And we're thrilled to be able to bring this to a much wider audience than we're able to do so just in Edinburgh. The other great thing that we can bring to the students participating in this competition is access to our Trimble technology. Um, so Edinburgh Napier has been gifted equipment and software by a California-based uh, company, Trimble, NASDAQ listed, um, where we've been able to establish two state-of-the-art Trimble technology labs. Um, there's only one other university in the UK with access to this um, software and hardware. Um, gives hands-on experiences of, you know, ways to really, um, I guess, sort of empower disparate teams across the construction life cycle. So whether you're scanning buildings, whether you're doing design, whether you're doing 3D printing of build models, digital fabrication, all the way through to implementing construction cost estimating and scheduling. It's all things that Trimble are able to do. And through um, their uh, ownership of, of SketchUp, the really critical part, as Yogini's already mentioned, of a way to, for the students participating in this competition to demonstrate their fantastic ideas. So bring it all together in introducing Timber TED. Timber TED is our new learning pathway for timber careers, bringing all the disparate learning that already exists and how to use timber well in, in the built environment and pulling it together into a new way of experiential learning that assesses um, that helps to assess that experiential learning. Rather than sitting down and filling a test or passing an exam, actually getting out and doing it's the best way to learn. So supporting this um, the design challenge kind of put, allows us to put this into practice and gives us a whole platform of lots of different learners from all across the UK and beyond um, to take on this innovative approach to timber engineering education. Um, it's supported by the HCI Skills Gateway and um, UFI Voctec Trust. And the 2022 competition, like I said, will really see our timber technology engineering design learning adopted across the UK. To be honest, we can't wait to see what a difference those taking part in this competition will make to Hereford Southside and then the world. But before we take over the global domination part, let's go to Hereford and hear from Professor Robert Hurstens. Thank you. Thanks, Kirsty. It's all good. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be here and to be partnering on this competition. So, yeah, I'm Professor Robert Hairstands of the New Model Institute for Technology and Engineering, where I'm the director for the Centre for Advanced Timber Technology. And I also still have a role at Edinburgh Napier University, where I run the research centre there on off-site construction and innovative structures. So all that great back catalogue of work that, that Kirsty described is certainly what we're looking to pull in and mobilise and create wider impact across the UK utilising. So just a, so a brief introduction to NMITE. Um, NMITE is a start-up higher education institute based in Hereford, which is where this competition is to reside. Um, at NMITE, there's the Centre for Automated Manufacturing, uh, as well as the Centre for Advanced Timber Technology, and they recently launched MEng in Integrated Engineering. So only very recently have they taken in their first student intake. And the, the pedagogical approach of NMITE is, is different in a sense. It's all about challenge-based learning activities. So how that educational approach can instill the, the knowledge into the individuals through practical uh, and industry-experienced learning. Of course, CAT is what we're looking to establish there 
principally in partners with Edinburgh Napier, but also with Timber Development UK. And the, the basis for that really is how we can accelerate the use of timber in construction via sort of timber technology, engineering and design. So the kind of objective of CAT, which is really interesting because prior to me even uh, taking on the director role, there was a series of round tables, et cetera, held with industry. And the, the, the objective that came from industry in terms of what they wanted CAT to do was really to, to stimulate collaboration across the industry, both vertically, so seed to end product, and also horizontally in terms of architecture, construction, and digitization as a common theme together with sharing a wider audience how rewarding a career in timber can be. So I think this has already sort of been borne out through what's been previously present, presented, that this is very much about interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary approaches if we are really to affect change at scale. And if we think about that full sort of supply chain or value chain from forest floor to build asset, as well as those that interface with it in terms of the professional practices, you know, uh, whether it's cost consultants, architects, engineers, building performance engineers, et cetera, or those that deliver it on site. And those that also influence that in terms of decision-making process from the client all the way through to, to building control. And those that add value to timber through that supply chain from the sort of mechanization piece in terms of converting it into dimensional lumber all the way through to that built asset, including insulation or M&E. There's a, there's a huge landscape to consider in terms of who engages with the delivery of the built environment and indeed who we need to educate uh, to, to do it differently and to do it better in order uh, to affect change with regards to you know, the climate crisis. So there's a, a really huge landscape to cover there. And of course, we can only do this through this partnership approach. And that's what's really exciting about this competition is the fact that it, it spreads out across you know, the, the UK in terms of engaging the learners with it. And what was really neat from what Tabitha explained is those learners coming together from different, not just different disciplines, but different universities as well and different backgrounds at different stages in, in terms of uh, where they are in their, their career progression. Uh, and as a result, what you therefore get is you, you get that cohesion within a, a team, you ideally get diversification, and you get a collaborative approach in terms of making, making change. And that sits squarely at the heart of indeed what N might want to do through a partnership approach. So, uh, and that's what this, pro this, um, this project further instills, that we, we want to partner with industry as well as academics and, and stakeholder groups to, to deliver change at scale. So CAT has been established in partnership with Edinburgh Napier University uh, and also by extension the Construction Scotland Innovation Centre and the resources that reside there in terms of an innovation factory for the manufacture of advanced timber technologies. And then at ENU there's also the test facilities that are there that have already been established and, and obviously helped with the, the creation of these Queen's anniversary prizes and the impact that we've had into the sector. So we want to capture that and, and, and broaden it out across the, the UK base. And as, as uh, Kirsty mentioned as well, we have the established relationship with, with Trimble and via CAT, we have a relationship with Dietrichs, which is the CAD CAM software. So there's real opportunities in terms of how we can pull and draw in upon our, our network and pull a resource to affect change at scale. So that's where this is really exciting to be working with uh, Timber Development UK and the Passive House Trust and the other industry partners that we can bring in uh, to develop the content. The educational approach, as I explained, that NMI and CAT is to take is very much about this challenge-based learning piece. So what we want to do is um, have access or have the learners have access to the learning resources that, re that they require. Uh, and the, the approach of timber technology and engineering design will create that approach. So we want learners to be able to engage with the learning resources and then apply those learning resources into real life challenges which are set by industry. So this competition is very much a demonstration of that. And ultimately, we want the, the degrees or the accredited learning that we ultimately create to be conceived and taught on that basis. And if we can create that system effect of doing this, then the, these learning activities and challenge-based activities create value return for the learner as well as those that have set the challenge, i.e. the industry or the, or the stakeholder groups. 
And correspondingly, we keep the, the information and the content continually refreshed so that educational system and that educational model continually evolves and keeps up to speed with the, where the market needs to go to, which is critically important when we think again about the climate crisis and really demonstrating the value return of what we want to do and deliver with regards to the built environment. So we have to think much more about the holistic value or the whole life value proposition of that inbuilt asset and think about the embodied energy, the embodied carbon, the operational carbon and the operational energy, as well as the wider impact that, that, that it can have in terms of even job and wealth creation or even biophilic design responses, which, which can help with the health and well-being of, of the occupants. So in this respect as well, what we're establishing at CAT is in a sense a living lab. So there is going to be a building where uh, the learners will be, uh, can go to. And, and that will host a studio space as well as workshop space where there'll be equipment to, to manufacture, test, break, uh, add value to the, the resource to, to fully understand it and ideally put that into uh, end projects as well so that the, the, what they work on uh, ultimately becomes a, a, a demonstration. The building itself will also be measured and monitored, so we're putting sensors into it, we're collecting information from it. So the building itself will be an educational toolkit in many respects. But the living lab is not just this building, the living lab is the built environment itself. So as I say, what we want to further curate and work with industry is for the, the learners to be mapped onto live projects, uh, to be in, involved with real life challenges, and for the living lab to be that built environment so we can create a feedback loop from it uh, using digital technologies to continually update and refresh the learning content. And I think that's where this project really offers up a very unique opportunity given that what the learners, learners will be doing and engaging with will ultimately become a live project. So hopefully what's done will ultimately inform that approach and create value return for the stakeholders that are, in, that are engaged with it. So with that, I'll hand over to, to Tabitha to inform you further about the, the competition itself. Thank you, Robert. Now this is where we've all got uh, things in the wrong place. <laughs> so those of you who are in the room will take questions at the end and we have got a roving mic. Um, if you can wait till, you know, put your hand up and um, wait until the mic comes to you, otherwise we won't hear your question. But those of you who are attending online, you will have had a Slido link, so please submit your questions um, via that channel. I know we've already had um, one question in, which I'll pick up on at the end. And so your question could be any for anybody, whether they are um, David Hopkins, who's bringing together um, Timber Development UK, or Robert, or Kirsty, or um, Eugenie. <coughs> Um, and I am so pleased to be working with our partners. I mean, what a wealth of knowledge and information they are going to, you know, impart. So tonight, it is the soft launch of um, Timber Development UK's University Design Challenge 2022, and it is called Southside Hereford. It's open to built environment students and to 2021 graduates. So any of you who graduated this summer are welcome to come and join us. Again, we'll be asking you to form interdisciplinary design teams of between four to eight members. Now, last year we had very difficulty um, separating architects. Um, ideally, you will learn far more if you do form an interdisciplinary team. But if you can't do that and you are gonna come in as just one discipline, then you will need to take on those other roles so that you will get a holistic understanding of how buildings come together. You will be asked to design a building for our three clients in Hereford. And this building has got funding and it will be built in 2023. And you will be able to inform the design and delivery team. This building needs to be timber-based. It needs to reach net zero. And we mean by that as net zero as possible before you even consider offsetting. It needs to be an exemplary community building. The community need to love this building because if they don't, there's no point in building it. 
and it needs to, to produce more energy than it consumes. And this is why it will need to be designed to Passive House and Passive House Plus standards. And our three clients are NMITE, but this is an outreach from NMITE, it's not the university itself, it's how would they want to um, interact with the local community on the south side and the outskirts of Hereford. It's with Growing Local, a local community interest company who grows vegetables, does veg box schemes, has a community garden and educates children and adults on how to grow and to cook vegetables and fruit. And Belmont Wanderers, a junior football team that has 200 um, members starting from five years up, both male and female, and is growing and have outgrown their current pitches and their current changing room. The building that they want your help in designing sits between two fields, or two rather areas. Belmont Wanderers sits on an area of 17 acres, and Growing Local sits on a slightly smaller acreage of 16 and a half. I think there's already a bit of competition between uh, you know, the vegetable growers and, uh, and the footballers. <clears throat> And how is that building going to impact the local area? How is it going to house um, all the things that it needs from a community cafe, a community teaching area on how to cook? How does it sit with the nursery garden? How does it sit with a football team and the changing rooms they require? How about the meeting rooms? Oh, and we mustn't forget the bar. That's been um, you know, highly recommended. They need a bar. There's no pub local. So how does this building suit the community? How does it answer our call to our climate change commitments? How is it resilient? How can it be looked at for circularity? Can it be reused at the end of its life? Actually, should it have an end of life? Should it carry on? Is 60 years long enough to be designing buildings for? Surely they should be 120 or more. But as I said, tonight is just like the soft launch. <coughs> On December the 14th, we will hold another webinar at half past six in the evening from professionals that will educate us better than, than us four in the room about how to build in a climate emergency and what we should be looking at. And we'll also introduce the software that we will be providing via our um, software supporters to each team. On the 21st of December, you will meet the clients who will tell you in detail what they are looking for and introduce the brief. And then in the first week of January, with all those people who have signed up, we will help you form teams. And then from January and the second week through to the uh, first week in March, we will bring you webinars from professionals within the industry to educate and inform, and, and for you to interact with them. We'll also run workshops on um, sort of Passive House and the design software that we will be providing. Currently, our submission date is Easter Monday, um, April the 18th, and judging will be in May, and the awards will be in June. And there are cash prizes for each member of the team, so it does not matter whether you have a team of four or a team of eight you will all get the same amount of money for, if, you know, for the placed prizes. And we could not put on these competitions without sponsors. And so far, as we're just launching the competition, we'd like to thank our silver sponsors who have stepped forward. Timber Decking and Cladding Association, who sponsored us last year, have come in against it this year, along with Akoya and PEFC. Our new sponsors this year are Stora Enzo and Passive House Homes, again bringing really useful information and resources to our participants. And thanks too to our Brompton sponsor, Rotterblas, who are again returning. 
And we would like to really extend a big thank you to our software sponsors. So we'll be bringing you a carbon calculator tool from the AECB. We'll be bringing you Design PH from the International Passive House Association. And we'll be bringing you SketchUp and more from Trimble. So our challenge is in a climate and biodiversity crisis, what difference could you make? Any questions? So I'm looking at the room now and trying to open Slido at the same time. So one question on Slido currently is, will a recording of the event be made public? Um, yes, so all these events are made public. And that's probably what I didn't highlight before um, with um, Riverside Sunderland. So not only did we have 80 professionals give up their time to come and talk um, to, you know, online to all our participants, that there is a legacy up on YouTube and those of you who are watching it on live stream will be on that channel. Any of you who are watching it subsequently, if you just Google Riverside Sunderland YouTube recordings, you will see 13 webinars that are all from you know, the professionals which I highlighted um, before. And this um, webinar or this event will also go live on that channel. And all the, um, you know, all the webinars that we will hold in um, January and February will also go there, along with our events on the 14th and the 21st. I'm going to flick. So the Slido link is up there. So if you hold your phone up to the screen, you can um, join us and ask any questions. And how do you get involved? I'm going to change the slide. So all the uh, competition information is currently on the TRADA Academic Competitions page. So if you, um, that um, QR code on the bottom right corner there will take you directly to that page. No, no more questions? Oh, we have, we have two questions potentially. Uh, can I ask if, uh, is it open for only UK graduates and students or does it extend beyond the border to Europe <laughs> and the rest of the world? Thanks, Air Club. Um, just um, UK or, yeah, yeah so the British, British Isles. Um, we did considering extending it beyond, but then we get into all the sorts of different regulations that you would need, you know, need to meet or understand so that's why because our live site is in Hereford we've kept it currently to the UK but as you said it is open to any student within the built environment whether they're first year or whether they're doing their PhD or whether they graduated in 2021 and we had a team of, and I must agree shout out to Anglia Ruskin who put forward a team who are first years and they just missed out on the shortlist so you had first year Anglia Ruskin students along with an Edinburgh student who actually got that close to, to making the shortlist, which again was you know, quite incredible. And they were really tenacious. So yes, I have high hopes for, for those students. <laughs> hang on, hang on for the microphone. <laughs> so you stole my question, I glove. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, Another question, therefore, would be because this design challenge is running concurrent with a, an actual live uh, case, right? So there's a, a live sort of plan and procurement exercise that's, that's going on at the same time as, as we are running this. And we've had thoughts about how to, you know, how to take the learning from this and, and, and impart it into that live process. Um, yeah, so I guess just uh, what's your thoughts in terms of, you know, what we should explain to the audience in terms of how we will take the content from this and interface it with the, mm. with the, with the stakeholder group to mm. inform what they ultimately want to do and mm. deliver. 
Well, again, the, the, the stakeholder groups so are our three clients. We're very excited, thinking that um, all our student our participants were going to come and design their building for them and actually come and, and, and build it, and which I wouldn't be against at all. It'd be, you know, absolutely fantastic. Um, if any of you followed Studio Bark, that's, um, you know, literally what they did this, um, this summer. They took students and built a whole house from it. But um, I think our clients are not that keen on going that far, but, um, you know, pretty close. So they are very keen to have input from um, not only the industry, but from, you know, from our learners, because we are into uncharted territories. You know, we are not, we cannot build as usual. We, we have to do something different. We have to work collaboratively. We're going to explore different ways of procurement, um, and we will be working with the clients to look at different methods and bringing that out again to the wider public. And the um, three clients are very keen to potentially work with, you know, the, no, not only the winners, but who knows which way it's going to go. You know, you could actually, as part of your team, end up working actually on the site or, or working for whoever ends up, you know, delivering this building. You know, there is no, there's no limits to where it could go. I mean, it is a huge opportunity. Perfect. Thanks, Tabitha. Yeah. So, if there's no more questions, we will send out... Ah, I'm being told there is. Okay, so, are the teams assigned, or can you bring a pre-made team? Um, you can bring a pre-made team. You know, um, that, that happened, um, well, partly last year, and then we added to it. So there was um, some, some, well, they grew up together in Birmingham, and they went off to study engineering and architecture at all different universities. And I think they came third in the competition, if I remember rightly. Um, so, you know, you can bring, <coughs> bring a pre-made team together. Um, if you entered last year, again, you can, you know, re-enter. There's nothing to stopping you. All we're saying is currently that you need to be studying at a UK university in a built environment subject um, or have graduated from one of those universities in 2021. So, no, please come and get involved. In which case... Um, we also, as I said, we're saying we'll send out all the links and all the information. It will be publicly available online. And we look forward to um, working with you and, um, yeah, working with, again, the Passive House Trust, Edinburgh Napier University, and NMIT as we bring knowledge and information to our future professionals. Thank you. <laughs>